what we've got to do is, is go ahead and, and get our uh, torch fired up. And how we're going to do that is by opening our gas slightly. Now when I say slightly, most of the individuals that first strike for the first time think that cracking is open this thing half away, half the way. And what happens is you get a huge flame. So when you do this, you want to be careful and make sure that no one's standing adjacent to you. And like I said before, you've already ensured that your work area is nice and clean and uh, flame, no, nothing that's extremely flammable or combustible is in the work area. But you also want to make sure if someone's standing in the immediate vicinity that you don't have the tip turned in their direction when you strike. So I'm going to crack the gas. Gas only. I just loosen my valve so I can control it. Gas only and strike it one time with a torch or until it ignites the, the fuel gas. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this gas out and get where I think I need to be and then add my oxygen in to acquire a neutral flame. We do all carbon steel uh, welding, soldering, and brazing with a neutral flame. There's three types of flames. There's a carburizing flame, there's an oxidizing flame, and then there's the neutral flame. And the neutral flame, if you can see, the inner cone is nice and sharp and crisp. Like, about like that right there. Now, a carburizing flame, you would have a long inner cone like that which would be too rich on gas and too lean on oxygen, okay? And then an oxidizing flame, excuse me, I did that wrong. A carburizing flame would be too rich on gas like that, which resembles the same thing. But an oxidizing flame would be if I turn too much gas in, notice how my inner cone gets really, really small and it actually ramps up like a jet engine. That's actually, uh, too, too much oxygen involved in that. Now if you ever get confused on where you are, you can always just shut the oxygen off and you're, you're, you've got nothing but raw gas ignited now and you can start back over again by adding your oxygen to your fuel gas and getting that good neutral flame that you want. Now this is not enough heat for this process, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more gas. and more oxygen to get the flame that I need. Now that's gonna be more about what I need for this process. All right, so now that we've got it struck up, I've got my rod beside me, my RG60 rod. What's important on this process is once again, you gotta heat the metal. And what you're looking for is you wanna see this metal actually start wetting. It's gonna look like that it's turning to water and that's actually the, me the metal reaching its melting point. And you want to do it not on the, the upper face of the metal, but all the way through the metal in the bottom of the metal where we beveled it so we get 100% penetration. So I'm going to put the flame down in the very bottom of the metal down here. Most of your heat is right off of the, the cone on this tip right here. That blue inner cone on acetylene, most of the heat is just shortly off of that tip. Where on propane, about two inches back is where most of the heat is. Now acetylene is the only fuel gas that you can use for oxy fuel welding. It creates a shield around the weld which prevents oxidation from occurring. So notice how I'm way down inside the metal getting ready to put my root tack way down in the bottom here. And I'm waiting, I'm not adding any metal because I'm waiting for this to start wetting. Now I see it wetting right now, I'm gonna get even closer and burn a keyhole through there and, and melt my rod with the heat itself. And now I'm gonna burn that metal in side to side. Now that tack is taken. Now we'll do a tack on the other side right here, doing the same process, putting the heat all the way down, getting it hot enough, it'll start turning red. After it turns red, both surfaces have to wet, which is showing you that you're melting the actual base metal, 
and then you're going to apply your filler metal, which is the RG60 rod, and you're going to be melting all three of them at one time to fuse them all together. Now I'm starting to see it wet now. I'm going to add my rod. Melt my rod away and burn that in on both sides. Alright, now I've got both of my tacks in place. Now I'm going to actually add a little bit more gas and maybe turn down my oxygen a little bit. Because I noticed it was blowing too hard of a stream of oxygen as I was doing that. All right, so I'm gonna start back at the same process and I'm gonna put my root pass all the way in doing the same process that I just done with the tack. But I'm not gonna be concerned about welding the upper edges, that's gonna be my filler pass. I'm more concerned with way down in the metal, filling that whole gap in with a root pass, getting 100% penetration. That's very important to get your heat right from the beginning. You want to make sure that you don't have trouble keeping everything nice and hot. There's two methods. There's the front hand and the back hand. I always like to push my metal instead of pull it. Notice I'm making me a puddle, and I'm manipulating that puddle side to side to get that root burned way down in there. Burning it in really good. I'm actually burning a divot. If any of you guys that play golf, a divot is when the ball hits the green and makes a big indention. I'm actually burning a divot away from each side of the metal, making that metal puddle up in there and fuse both sides together. Notice I'm not concentrating on the outer surfaces of the metal or the metal that's facing me, facing upwards. I'm more concerned about the metal deep down inside wanting to fuse the back side of this metal together, indicating 100% penetration. I'm pushing that metal, grabbing that puddle, moving it side to side. All right, guys, I'm not going to do the whole thing. That's the root. Now we'll go over with a cover pass. I'm going to add a little bit more gas to my cover pass. I want it a little hotter. I need a little bit bigger puddle. And I don't need to be so fine-tuned on manipulating that stuff way down in the root. Now I'm going to be heating both sides of the metal up and making a larger puddle and just weaving that puddle side to side to fuse these sides in together. It's very important though that you get all everything up to the melting point where they're all wet before you add any metal in there. Notice how it's all wet now. I like to go ahead and let it get extremely hot so it flows really good. Okay, I'm going to add me a puddle. I'm going to get me a good little puddle of metal started. And now I'm going to burn that in side to side.
Add more metal. Side to side. More metal. Side to side. It's a very tedious process, but for you guys out in the field that don't have a welder on your truck, this can be a lifesaver. If you've got a, a leak on a pipe, say you've got a, a water leak somewhere, and it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and you're on call on the weekends, and you don't have access to a welder, you can utilize this OxyFuel welding to repair that leak. Now that's all that I'm going to do right now. You give that an opportunity to cool so you can get a good visual of that. And I'm going to shut my oxygen off first, the gas off last, and terminate my flame. Now if you get an opportunity to look at that, I've got uh, somewhat of a hurried finished product over there. Understand that it becomes better as you do it with experience. Uh, and it can look really good. It can look just like you put a, a stick welder in there and performed it. I'm going to take my glasses off just so you can see. And let me grab a piece of metal over here so you can see what a finished product will look like. This is something like what a finished product looks like right here, guys. Now, it's not quite as good uh, as using a stick welder, and it's been some time since I've been performing this. I used to be a lot better at it, but it can look uh, really nice. Uh, you can get to the point where you're just stacking dimes on there, and it's building up and looking really nice. But that's what your finished product is, and this thing will hold pressure. It'll, uh, it'll hold a lot of stress, just like the rod says, 60,000 pounds per square inch. Uh, if you guys got any questions, you can contact me. My phone number is 770-715-3767. Uh, until I see you again, you guys be safe, and I appreciate it.